But 12 months ago, they had the same problem. Today, it's more imperative. You know, if you if you look at the macro story, so what's been delaying things, and you know, given the nature of some of the politics in America at the moment, we've got impeachment hearings going on, we've got Iran waivers being discussed, another 60-day extension. You know, is it possible to make a decision in that environment? Look, we 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 think so. I mean, it's certainly been harder to get to the top of the pile. Um, you know, since the original working group, uh, you know, uh, deliberations and report they prepared, it's been very hard. Uh, every time we thought that, you know, we were we were closer, it kept getting delayed. Um, certainly with our discussions with um, p- uh, people in Congress and, and those in administration, we say, look, we're out of time. Um, we need to tell our shareholders, um, you know, what the outcome is with this review. Um, we They need to understand uh, you know, we're getting hammered and in, in, with our share price. Um, and it, we also need to send a clear message to the world of uranium mining and these nuclear fuel products, including the Russians, the Chinese, and the Kazakhs, that the United States of America is not going out of business in this area of the front end. Okay, I understand. So so what are the options on the table now? I mean, we, we talked before Christmas, you, you said there's a bunch of options available to the government. We've been reading over here about um, government buying programs um, of, of US uh, uranium. Have you got, a, have you had conversations? Have you got a sense of what that could be? Is it just, look, look, is it just I, guesswork? I'll, I'll, or is it, what do you know? Uh, Look, we're trying not to make a guesswork because we know that it's better for us to provide some guidance here. I mean, the first thing we want is we want the government to come out and say that the government uh, is supporting the reestablishment of the nuclear fuel cycle in the United States, mining, conversion, and enrichment at a level that at least provides some critical mass so that we have the capability to produce sort of our basic requirements, not all our products, but we can flex up in, you know, if if required. So the number one is we want to be able to uh, show our shareholders, uh, tell the world or have the government tell the world the conclusions that they've made through uh, both the working group and the section 232 uh, investigations. That's number one. Number two, we want to see or we hope to see immediate demand for uranium mining uranium mining is the most challenged uh, first step of the of the process and uh, we would like to see the government starting to buy uranium now like this year 2020 uh you know and onwards um you know to to make sure that the uranium miners uh, can sell their product at fair prices fair prices so that, uh, you know, we can get some cash flow reestablished. You know, these companies that are not producing now zero cash flow, uh, it's not a real good outcome. That's not sustainable for a long period of time. And then lastly, um, the plan, the plan that they announce, you know, we do realize that some of this or a big chunk of this is going to have to go through appropriations. Um, The expensive part of the plan is really the enrichment. Uranium mining and conversion already have a lot of the infrastructure in place uh, and are the the, the lesser side uh, of this reestablishing the fuel cycle. But when you start talking about building uh, new enrichment plants, you know, being able to make uh, everything from, you know, 495, uh, 235, all the way up to in the 90s, 235, um, that's going to start costing billions. Now, the government was already planning to reestablish enrichment without, in the early days, without looking at the uranium and the conversion steps. Interesting. So if, if you, just to remind people, U.S., 20% of their energy is produced by nuclear fusion. Um, there's, there, there have been a few plants which have come to end of life, a few due to come to end of life. The utilities have got multiple options. They've got gas, they've got oil, they've got renewable. Nuclear is part of that. But for them to invest billions of dollars into upgrading or building new plants must be a big part of the conversation that they're having with government too. So the miners are just a, a small part of this, but it's got to be joined up thinking, surely. Yeah, and I think I think that was a lot of the logic when um, when the president came up with this working group. Now, granted, the working group's main focus was just these first three steps of the fuel cycle, 
um, but um, certainly the the government is um, the Trump administration is 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 committed to keeping as many nuclear power plants um, operating, um, you know, going forward uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, I think that the government, uh, you know, like the DOD and DOE. Uh, are also getting increasingly optimistic about the uh, micro reactors and the small modular reactors. Um, you know, these, this new HALU fuel, which is 20%, uh, 235, uh, is also kind of becoming, uh, you know, a, a product that the government thinks that they will need um, for the, the SMRs uh, particularly. Um, you know, and then lastly, you know, um, you know space travel. You know that's coming back onto the horizon now that probably isn't a large consumer and takes some you know time out um but uh you know again i've said it to you many times it is not time for the united states to not be in this business mark can i just um, ask you your view on this iranian waiver uh issue at the moment it's it's a real political hotbed the europeans don't want it they don't want these the, these waivers removed. Um, I know there's a lot of discussion internally with, between Pompeo and Mnuchin. Uh, there's slight like disagreement about it. Is that just a big distraction for you? Just, I mean, it's, well, I guess it's got to well, be. I, but I, what do you do about it? Look, I think it helps us because I think it shows how sensitive and interrelated, um, you know, this um, fuel market is. You know, outside of the United States. Um, I mean, even this morning, I was hearing that um, Trump and Pompeo were wanting uh, the waivers to go away. Um, but they also said, and, and when I heard this on the radios, Fox News, um, that, um, you know, the utilities, uh, you know, they don't want it to go away because they have such a dependency already on the former Soviet Union, the Russians, uh, for, uh, you know, fu fueling their reactors. So. It's all interconnected. So, you know, people talk about we've got all these stockpiles, we've got all this uranium, we don't need it for another, um, you know, five years, 10 years. So, you know, obviously the business, uh, you know, it couldn't ever be healthy. I mean, I'm, I know that's not the case, but then when you start looking at um, if you, 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 you remove um, or let these, these waivers expire and it starts creating issues where the Russians cannot uh, import into the United States or cut back on that, a lot of these utilities are going to start running out of fuel like within a year. And that should, again, shock people. It, well, what yeah. happened to all the inventories? Where are all those products? You know, we thought we had, you know, five, ten years of those products available. We don't. Well, I'm trying, I'm trying to work out... Um, because there's so little data out there is, you know, how much inventory is available to U.S. utilities today? What are they sitting on a year, two years, three years? Because that makes a big impact on their behavior and their decision making, especially, you know, they don't want high prices. Yeah, look, look at the utilities and, and look, at I, I understand they want the lowest cost fuel, uh, you know, to keep nuclear as competitive as they can. You know, we know that, you um, um, you know that that fuel is such a small percentage of nuclear generation, but you know nuclear generation is 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 struggling. Um, you know, um, but you know, it, but it's there's you know uranium's in all these different shapes and forms, and and um, you know, so you got to make sure you keep those into balance with what your requirements are. Um, so you know, I think that um, um, you know it just highlights um, the fact that you know the United States doesn't have the ability now. You know, um, you know, Urenco uh, is foreign owned and it, it's in New Mexico and they can do enrichment there up to 495, um, you know, but we do not have U.S. owned uh, 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 capacity for enrichment. Um, you know, we do have, um, you know, U.S. owned uh, capacity for conversion, but that's shut down right now. I think it just highlights the fact that you do not want to be overly dependent on all these other countries, and you do not want to be in a position to have to fight with one or both of your arms tied behind your back with like the Iranians or whatever, and the relationships they have with the Russians.